Uh, hello, everyone. I welcome all the speakers and our audience for today's webinar on the topic, Engaging Technology to Maximize Profits, brought to you by Cotton Council International in partnership with the Textile Magazine. By default, the mic and webcam would be on mute for all our attending audience. But if you have any specific question, please use the Q&A tab. There's a Q&A tab at the bottom. You could press that. You could post your questions and uh, uh, your name and the organization whom you represent. And these questions will be addressed at the end of the webinar. In today's webinar, uh, we have experts from Cotton Council International who are going to help you get better clarity on how to increase profits by using quality raw materials and industry proven working standards. As you are well aware of all the problems that have risen due to recent supply chain disruption and also because of increase in demand, which subsequently has resulted in increase in raw material prices. Speakers in today's session are going to help clear all your doubts. So please use the Q&A uh, window to post your questions and these questions will be answered during the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Without further ado, I would like to welcome our first speaker for today's session, Mr. Piyush Narang. He represents Cotton Council International for Indian and Sri Lankan markets. He would be giving a short introduction about the company and he would also take time to introduce the other speakers for today's session. Hello, Piyush, the mic is yours. Thank you very much, Dinesh, for the introduction. Uh, Welcome everyone to our today's Cotton USA Solutions webinar. And the topic of today is engaging technology to maximize profits. And before we actually move on to the agenda and introducing our speakers and the details, I, I will first like you to introduce to our solutions team and also the offerings that we are having in Cotton USA Solutions buckets. I'm sure most of you already know about Cotton USA Solutions as a technology uh, support system for the US cotton. But still, you know, uh, there are a couple of uh, you who have joined today and you know, are uh, getting introduced just now. So let's have a quick video about that. If you're looking for greater profitability, improved productivity, and the latest techniques, look to the cutting edge in cotton, Cotton USA Solutions. This new cotton consultancy was created to take mills and manufacturers to the next level of success with a team of experts who provide an unmatched global perspective. Informed by our work with over 1,500 mills in 50 plus countries, our offerings can be in-person or virtual and are complementary for licensees, starting with mill studies. This collection of research is based on third-party controlled in-mill testing and provides hard data to build your business, like new spinning protocols that increased ring frame productivity over 8%, Blend insights, and more. Next is the Mill Exchange program that lets you exchange ideas with mill executives from around the world. You'll tour licensee signature mills and share proven techniques in cotton yarn processing. Cotton USA Solutions also offers technical seminars. They provide training in buying, spinning, handling, and more using the latest US cotton techniques from across the supply chain. Next, our Mill Mastery course, where you can gain a new level of expertise with a comprehensive course of study from raw cotton to bale management to quality control to make you a true spinning master. Finally, there are one-on-one -on -one mill consults, offering you customized consulting services for proven cost savings from 10 to 25%. Cotton USA Solutions, with Mill Studies, our Mill Exchange Program, technical seminars, mill mastery course and one-on-one -on -one mill consults we're here to take your business to the next level learn more at cottonusa.org solutions or contact your representative cotton usa solutions yeah so that was the the solutions uh, uh offerings there are five offerings that you would have noticed and now let's come down to the most important topic that we are looking for today. Last two years have been a roller coaster ride for all of us, especially for the textile industry. And when we talk of textile industry, especially for the spinning mills, I mean, we have to manage really a lot. And one of the major challenges for us is to deliver profits. So the, the topic of our today's agenda is engaging technology to maximize profits. So what's the formula for maximizing the profits if you just put a basic equation to it it's like maximizing the function the function here is maximizing the profits so it's a very simple equation which looks like to be very simple 
it's maximizing the revenue and then minimizing your cost and all of us who are engaged in our you know working day to day activities either of either we are engaged in you know maximizing the revenues or we have to see how we can reduce the cost but then when you look at the factors i mean there are enormous factors which can be you know there can be infinite factors you know that you can actually improve your revenue or you can decrease your cost so that is what our cotton usage solutions team is looking towards our cotton usage solutions team in last uh, in, in the year 2021 have actually made more than 200 engagements they have done one to one milk consults they have done technical surveys they have also done more than 20 seminars and the feedback they have they have got from most of the mills is that you know almost 90% of the respondents have told that the the the, the expert is amazing the, the the team that we have is amazing and unparalleled so this is the team that we are speaking about we have a nine people team where we have the head is our uh, Our uh, CCI Executive Director, Mr. Bruce Atherley, our Head of Technical Services, George Bavarsax, Roger Gilmartin is supporting them, and then we have a team which is, you know, working from different countries. And today we have a privilege of having three of this, you know, elected speakers with us today who will be speaking in different topics. So let's quickly come down to the agenda. When we're speaking of the agenda, the first topic that we are going to speak today is by Mr. Alan Matthew. He is going to speak on the NEPS. a technical and financial comparison of machine and hand harvested cottons and then the other topic is extremely important for you know today's situation which is fiber selection insights from the mill mastery course this will be taken by mr thawasi vijay kumar and finally we will close with the barriers to profitability in the spinning mills by mr levan bras and after the presentations have been made there will be a q and a session we will encourage you to please put up your questions in the q and a chat box so that we can uh, see your question and at the end of the presentations we will be responding to your questions so let's come down to our first present mr alan met mr alan met you is the technical consultant for cotton council international alan met you joined cotton council international in november of 2021 he is a canadian national from quebec and joins us after a 31 year career having worked successfully as a consultant for major textile consultancy firms like gerzy and warner international with over two decades of service at warner alone he adds vast experience not only in the field of ring spinning open end technology but also from a consultancy and management standpoint in terms of labor and land productivity including benchmarking optimization of processes ie as well as implementing training plans and concepts within the entire spinning industry So let us please welcome Mr. Alan Matthew to give his presentation today. Alan, over to you, please. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope uh, that uh, the image and the sound is clear. Um, it's um, it's a real pleasure to be with you today. I'm sitting in Montreal, Canada. So it's early in in fact very early for uh, morning for me. Uh thank you for being with us. Um the every year uh CCI sponsors uh projects carried out by independent consultants to investigate aspects of cotton which has been raised with us during visits to customer Today I would like to present a full study made by external consultants that hits at two myths. The first one is that the first myth is that US cotton has more nips and that result in more nips in the yarn. And the second uh, myth is that US cotton is more expensive and that result in more expensive garments. So from time to time we hear complaints about the high content of nips and short fibers in the us cotton so the objective of the study was to look at the technical impact of all types of nips on carded and comb yarns the study was however not limited to spinning we looked at the technical and financial issues in knitting dyeing and garment making Sorry about this. Good. Okay. So 
talking about NEPS, uh, we also decided to see the impact of method of harvesting and ginning of cotton. So we asked the consultants to study cottons from four different sources. Of course, US cotton, Indian, Brazilian, and from West Africa. West African and uh, Indian cottons are normally hand-picked. US and Brazilian cottons are 100% machine picked. Indian cottons are rollagen, while US, Brazilian, and West Africans are sojourn. Now we know that the hand picked cotton will have fewer neps than mechanically harvested cotton. We also know that the sojourn cotton will have higher neps than the rollagen cotton. The yarn manufacturing, the spinning, took place at a large, well-established spinning mill in India. Knitting and garmenting, or cut and sew, were carried out at a customer of the yarn manufacturer. Both mills were considered by the consultants to be world-class uh, operations. Important to remember that all our projects are done by outside consultants through a tender process. The present study was awarded to PT Sriwijaya Text Tech Solutions from Indonesia. They are doing a phenomenal job every time. The study is divided in two parts a technical review where consultants monitored every stage from bale to garments. And the technical results were then quantified financially using the true cost of the two mills. Now, given the time constraint, I have only 20 minutes. I will go through quickly the results and will not spend too much time on the manufacturing process. The report of the consultants was 108 pages. So the presentation will sometimes look like a summary of summary. And even then, I'm, I'm afraid that uh, I will exceed the time that I was allowed this morning. Now, I would like to clarify a few things about this technical study. I'm a technical person, just like you. And I understand the effects of carding and combing settings will have on quality. I can assure you that this study was well done, that the fiber characteristics were equivalent for the four types of cottons, and that the machine settings and carding, combing, and the spindle speeds were kept the same for the four cottons under study. Well, no need to describe what is a NEP, but um, we have uh, different type different types of NEPs. We have the mechanical NEPs, uh, or NEPs created during the ginning and processing. Uh, they represent the majority of NEPs in US cotton. Then we have the seed coat NEPs, and we have finally the biological NEPs. Now these shiny NEPs are clumps of every very immature fibers that can be found in seed cotton before uh, mechanical processing has occurred. Biological NEPs, or the NEPs formed by fine and immature low micronef fibers, are a major cause of undyed spots, what we call the white specks in the finished fabric. How could we make uh, a perfect comparison and a perfect study? Well, the spinning mill was already using three of the four cottons that we wanted to study. And they bought Brazilian cotton to complete the comparison. Um, as we can expect, um, the NEPS per gram and short fiber content uh, is higher in the three sojourn cottons compared to Rolagen Shankar 6. In opening, cleaning, and carding, the results show that with the appropriate machine settings, the NEPS in the sojourn cottons were easily removed. 
As usual, there was an initial increase in NEPs in the blue room, followed by a drastic reduction during carding. The, this slide shows you the initial trash content of the individual cottons. The overall cleaning efficiency from bale to cart sliver ranged from 93% with US cotton to a low 82% for Brazilian cotton. Similarly, the NEP removal efficiency was the highest with the US cotton. Um, a lower trash content in US cotton translated in a naturally a lower waste removed in blue room and carding. As mentioned before, uh, same settings were used in blue room and carding. A special note from the consultants, they observed a high level of trash and bark in the Brazilian cotton. With uh, the same machine settings in combing, there was a significant uh, difference in the noil percentage extracted from the four cottons. Despite the initial high net count in sojin cottons, the neps can effectively removed uh, during carding and combing. It's also evident that US cotton achieved the highest reduction in short fiber content. Finally, we have um, the results in the yarn, and this is a count 30, 100% cotton carded compact. On the left table, we show the nets per kilometer using the 100 40% scale on the uh, Ooster tester. On the right table, we see that the yarn spun from US cotton shows very good IPI value. A reminder that after opening and cleaning, the US cotton had the highest uh, net count uh, of the four cotton tested. Regarding the high number of nets in the yarn with the Shankar 6 cotton, we believe that this cotton has more biological nets and a lack of opening and ginning. With the comb yarn, there was no significant difference between the four cotton varieties. The US comb yarn was mostly placed on the 5% benchmark level of the Euster statistics compared to an approximate level of about 20% for the other three yarns. On the ring frames, the performance of all, of all four cottons was monitored. The end breaks per thousand spindle hours and the pneumophil waste percentages were recorded. For both carded and comb yarns, the US cotton shows the lowest number of end breaks and consequently the lowest pneumophil waste. In winding for the carded yarns, the clear cuts in all categories uh, were lower uh, with the US cotton. For the comb yarns, the cuts were similar for all types of cotton. And the class mat finally provide the final evidence that the US cotton, cotton yarns uh, perform better than the competitors. Finally, uh, the yield achieved in spinning. Um, these are important graphs, as we know, that raw materials represent nearly 70% of the manufacturing cost in ring spinning. The yield was similar for the carded yarns, but the US cotton really shines in the comb production. The report uh, confirmed that in almost every aspect of yarn manufacturing, the machine harvested sojin cottons outperform the hand harvested runogen fiber. Moving on to knitting, uh, the fabric was a single jersey and you can see the machine specification and fabric parameters. They were, all these details were, were provided in the, in the report. 
all conditions remain constant again for the four cotton uh, varieties. The, the, consultants, the consultants monitor the performance of the knitting machine in terms of machine stops per roll of fabric, which was converted into stops per 100 kilograms of yarn. Expectedly, the, naturally, the breaks are lower uh, for comb yarns uh, for the four cotton types. And the results demonstrate, once again, the good performance of U.S. cotton. Some, some remarks about uh, the knitting. The consultants observed that the majority of stops were caused by yarn breaking on the cones or by fluff buildup in the slop catchers of the machine. Uh, the fluff generated was low for all yarns except for the Brazilian one. The majority of the Brazilian cotton yarn knitting stops was associated with trash present in the yarn. The knitted undyed fabric was then inspected using the partner's standard four-point system based on the frequency and size of the defects. So this table shows the grayish fabric uh, inspection results for carded and comb yarns expressed in points per 100 square yard of fabric and then converted into points per 100 kilogram of yarn knitted. Again, a solid performance for the U.S. cotton yarns, both carded and combed. In dyeing and finishing, the gray fabric was divided, so half was bleached, 25% was dyed into navy blue, which is a, a particular color, and the remaining 25% was dyed into red. The mill employed airflow technology and respected the same conditions for the four cotton types. The dyed fabrics, were then inspected again using the partner four-point inspection system. The fabric were also, all the fabrics were tested in the laboratory for shrinkage, spirality, color fastness, and color difference for each dye recipe. Now, using the four-point system, more than 28 points per 100 square yard is graded as a reject. As you can see, none of the fabrics made from any of the four cottons failed the inspection process. However, the US cotton performed better among the four cotton types. Only, uh, only carded yarns are shown here, but the performance of the US cotton is similar for the comb yarns, as well as in the bleach fabrics. Regarding the NEPS, the consultants took 25 square centimeter sample from each fabric and physically counted the NEPS and the white specks. The results in the table show that in the dyed samples, the US cotton fabric contain, contains eight times less NEPS than West African cotton in red shade and five times less snaps than Shankar 6 cotton in navy blue shade. As in um, yarn manufacturing and knitting, the results showed that in terms of both fabric quality and the impact of snaps, the machine picked sojin cottons outperformed the hand harvested rollagen fibers. All four fibers met the partner's 5% spirality and shrinkage standards. If we look at the individual results in the report, the US cotton produced comparatively better results in both tests. The whiteness index results for all four fibers were good. And there was, there was no difference uh, or significant difference in the testing results 
for color fastness and the delta E values between any of the four cotton. In particular, we would like to highlight the last point, the delta E values, as we hear comments from time to time about the problematic dyeing of U.S. cotton. So these results demonstrate that U.S. cotton dyes as well as all the other types of cotton. Now in garment manufacturing, um, T-shirts were produced from, from the white, navy blue, and red fabrics from all carded and comb yarns. From, for the partner garment manufacturer, an important measure of performance is the cotton to garment realization percentage. On the left, you have the realization of the carded yarns. And on the right, you have the realization of the comb yarns. The consultants commented that the poor results of Brazilian cotton samples were due to heavy fiber loss uh, during yarn manufacturing and knitting. All the t-shirts produced during the trial were again inspected using the partner normal quality standards and procedure. The partner had three grades of inspection, passed, degrade, and reject. The chart on the left shows that the percentage of the carded yarn garments that passed the inspection. And on the right, the percentage of garments that were rejected. Again, US cotton shows the best performance. For the comb yarns, on the left, you have the percentage of garments that passed in all colors. Um, on the right, you have the percentage of garment that were rejected in all three colors. The consultants again commented that hand harvested cotton uh, contain high level of contamination in both carded and comb yarns. It's important to mention that none of the garments made of any of the four cottons were rejected or graded B for NEPS. So after the technical comparison, the financial analysis was carried out. This chart shows the price paid by the spinning mill for the four fibers to be studied in the project. The domestic Shankar 6 cotton fiber was cheapest and the US Opland cotton was the most expensive by eight cents per pound. With the cost data of the two project partners, the consultants calculated the profit per garment generated by each of the cottons in the study. So this uh, slide finally shows the profit per garment for both carded and comb yarns. The exchange rate used in the calculations was one US dollar to 74 Indian rupees. And uh, in both cases, the U.S. cotton shows a higher profit. In comparing the price of the local Shankar 6 cotton, it may surprise many members of the today's audience that despite the higher entry cost of U.S. upland cotton fiber in the spinning mill, U.S. cotton can produce a garment that generates more profit per garment for the manufacturer. With uh, carded yarn garments, the profitability gap between Shankar 6 and the U.S. Uh, cotton is nine cents per garment per t-shirt. The gap is even greater, greater uh, with comb yarn garments, 22 cents per garment advantage for the U.S. cotton. Independent research studies commissioned by the CCI over the last three years have consistently confirmed that the practice of many mills to buy their raw materials uh, purely based on price only is a huge mistake. This has been reinforced by the present study.
This study has confirmed that although machine harvested sergeant cottons have more NEPs and a higher short fiber content, this had no negative impact on downstream processing of bottom line garment profitability. In this study, the hand harvested Rulogen cottons has been outperformed at every stage of processing and in all parameters quantified by the consultants. Compared to the other Sojin cottons, the US cotton has uh, also demonstrated uh, clear technical advantages, which translate in financial gains. From the CCI perspective, we are pleased that once again, uh, third party research has confirmed superior performance of US cotton in yarn manufacturing and subsequent processing. That's it. I thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I would be pleased to answer some of your questions at the Q&A session at the end. Um, if we are short of time, please feel free to reach me at, uh, you see my email address, amatthew at cotton.org. Thanks again. Thank you, Alan, very much uh, for your presentation. And uh, one of the concerns, you know, that uh, most of the Indian mills usually have uh, that, you know, there is an import duty in India, which is to the tune of 10%. And the results that you have showed that 22 cents per garment is straight away the advantage that, you know, that the US cotton is having vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, the, the domestic uh, produce. So I think, uh, you know, to our uh, listeners, to our participants today, one thing I want to assure you is that you know, if you are a cotton a USL SNC or if, and if you are a US cotton press protocol member, our services are complemented to you. And in case any other mill who is not using US cotton at the moment, but if they want to do a technical survey, our team will be very glad to come over and, you know, do this technical survey. And then if you're willing to use US cotton, we will be more than happy to help you over. And uh, if you are willing to become a trust protocol member as well. So yes, now uh, let's move on to our next speaker. I think he doesn't need any introduction in the Indian textile industry, but still uh, for our new participants, I'll still introduce him. Our next speaker is uh, Mr. Thawasi Vijay Kumar. Uh, we call him Vijay. And he's going to speak uh, on fiber selection insights from the mill mastery course from uh, uh, Cotton USA Solutions team. So Vijay graduated in 1984 with an engineering degree in textile technology from India. Vijay has gained hands-on technological knowledge with senior management experience running a world-class spinning mill in, in Indonesia with over 600,000 spindles. His mill produced high quality knitting yarns for some of the most important international brands in our industry and consistently used over 10,000 metric tons per month of US cotton for the last 15 years. His expertise has been recognized not only by the Cotton Council International, but by the R&D teams of Reiter, Susan, Ooster, uh, Liff, and LMW, who have all tapped into his knowledge in their own research to optimize the performance of their machinery and equipment. We are very fortunate today to have Mr. Vijay Kumar with us to speak on a very important topic. So over to you, Vijay, please. Thank you, Pius. Thank you very much. Um, so, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Vijay Kumar, uh, and I'm a textile technologist. Sorry for the starting troubles. I have some problem with my screen. Um, so, I'm I'm pleased to be here. Uh, uh, in this seminar to present about the cotton fiber selection, which is my favorite subject. So I'm a textile technologist from PSG Tech Coimbatore, and I also work as a senior technical consultant for CCI. I welcome all of you to this presentation. Uh, today, my presentation will focus on fiber selection concepts, which is a part of the mill mastery courses, and it will take about 25 minutes. I would be glad to answer your questions at the Q&A session. So I have divided my talk into three topics, three parts. 
Firstly, I would like to introduce the five different cotton USA solutions offerings. And secondly, about the fiber selection concept, which is the main topic of this presentation. I will spend more time discussing various aspects like background, basics, importance, etc., of fiber selection. And finally, sorry. And finally, the live demo of the interactive fiber selection seat for different applications. We have just recently started working on this, and it is a very unique tool. And some of you might be more interested to see what is there in there. So the five different uh, offerings are uh, the first one, uh, the research studies. Uh, the recently, uh, the previous uh, uh, presentation was a research study by what which was which was presented by Alan. So it was given to third party consultants to highlight the importance of fiber quality on the profitability of a spinning mill. The second offering is the mill exchange program. So mill executives from different mills visit suitable mills in other parts of the world to share and learn the concepts and technological advancements. Uh, the third one is CCA technical seminars. Various topics are selected and presented to customers in other countries. The fourth one is the new mill master courses. I will explain later about it. The fifth one is the most important one. It's one-on-one -on -one mill survey, the, our core business. So CCA consultants who have a lot of experience in processing US cotton will survey your mill and suggest possible improvements. CCA created these uh, five offerings so that our customers can make more profit with US cotton. I want to inform you that it is complimentary if you are a qualified cotton USA licensee and a USCTP member. So now let's move on to discuss more about the mill mastery courses. So CCA technical team members have spent a lot of time preparing a best practices manual based on their experience and the learning from the customers over the past few years. It consists of 17 modules covering 24 different topics and altogether it has more than 2000 PowerPoint slides with a lot of helpful information. So this is how it is, uh, you can see from the screen, this is how it is formed. It covers uh, critical topics like fiber quality, cotton buying, fiber selection, and bale management. In my opinion, these are the most important uh, topics for any spinning mill. It also has a lot of information about the process parameters with case studies and technical clarifications of all the processes from blow room up to twisting. Most probably there are few modules on essential topics like profitability, economic advantage of different spinning systems, signature mill case studies, and equipment maintenance. Overall, it is a unique concept documented during the COVID period by the CCI technical team that would benefit mills to process US cotton efficiently and make more money. So we always say after all, spinning is not about making yarn. It is always, it's about making money. So now we get into the central part of this presentation. Why this recipe book? Uh, so CCI always prioritizes its focus on customer requirements. Uh, CCI also understood from the mill visits that cotton parameter selection is, is an important activity to be introduced and implemented with clarity in any spinning mill. We have noticed that during our visits, mills prepare laydowns differently. Uh, few mills without HVA data prepare laydowns with lot management. Some Mills test 5 to 30% of bales with HVA for lot management. And very few mills use HVA data of 100% bales for bale management. And most of these mills do not prioritize parameter selection. So this is our observation during our visits. So several customers have been asking us for a recipe book, which is a recommendation of suitable fiber quality parameters for a given application based on the experience. No such recommendation for cotton parameter selection is available in the industry. Hence, it is very unique. To use such recommendation, fiber quality data of bales is very essential. So there is a strong correlation between cotton parameters and yarn parameters. We'll talk more about this with trial data in this presentation. Uh, if yarn parameters are measured objectively, we all know that every yarn is IPI, classimate pass, strength, strength CV, elongation, elongation CV, NEPS, um, long thin pulse, long thick pulse. It's very, it's measured very objectively per hundred kilometer per kilometer. And so if these yarn pa parameters are measured objectively, then we have to prepare lay down subjectively to produce yarn consistently with the required quality. But unfortunately, there is a lot of subjectivity in lay down preparation. 
and it has to change to run a spinning mill efficiently. The recipe book recommendation consists of a mean value, which is the average value of any parameter and the range for each cotton parameter. This recommendation standardizes cotton buying, which is very important for consistent yarn quality. And this is also the first step to implement bale management efficiently. So let us define fiber selection and get into the details. Fiber selection is nothing but selecting cotton fiber quality parameters to obtain the desired yarn quality levels and processing performance supported by practice and also by theory. So whether yarn quality should have 5% Worcester standard value or 50% Worcester standard values for different yarn quality parameters are decided mainly by cotton quality parameters. Having decided cotton parameters, the bale management helps to produce yarn with the required quality consistently. Fiber selection basics. Why is it so important? So raw material properties have to be defined objectively to manufacture a product, which is the fundamental principle of engineering. So it is applicable yarn manufacturing too. So I would be, it would be interesting to see in the food industry too, that if raw material is used objectively, it has helped them to establish their brand name through quality consistency. So as a spinner who used to bale management and cotton parameter selection for more than 25 years, I personally confidently say that selection of cotton quality parameters is the most critical activity in any spinning mill. And it is very much essential to achieve the desired yarn quality levels, processing performance and consistency in process or product with minimum cost which will give you minimum compliance. So if you think logically, spinning technology for a spinner is all about selecting process parameters according to the raw material parameters. The brand name for a spinner is nothing but yarn quality consistency. My experience of running a big spinning mill with more focus on cotton selection confirms that if it is done effectively, efficiently, and it's not difficult to run a spinning mill. All spinners will agree in UNISA that fiber quality largely determines the quality and processing performance. If we do not know what we put, it would be difficult to predict what we get. Next a few slides highlight the consistency in quality with cotton parameter selection. So these are the actual uh, data from a running mill. Uh, you can see uh, a carded yarn is selected. These all these lots are from the US cotton They're selected. And here the parameter selection was very good and the mill used 100% bale management system. And this is a yarn quality achieved for a period of one and a half years. And always the requirement from the brand, a carded yarn, compact carded yarn is around 80 to 100 IPA, around 100 IPA. So they were able to select the cotton parameters and achieve and issue the, and it is done every month around 50 to 60 containers. It's not a small quantity. So it is very much possible to produce what is required if cotton parameter selection is done properly. Uh, this slide exhibits IPA values of a 20s carded knitting yarn from different cards with various lots. The unique thing is, so individual cards were tested for every lot uh, to make sure that all the cards perform better. So we learned in this process that if we do not have clarity, if we do not know what is the consistency in the lay down, it is very difficult to even to set the process efficiently. So if you, if someone is very keen in set the process between card variation, between combed variation, then the raw material have to be consistent, which is very much possible if the bits are selected according to the parameters and the parameters are maintained uh, in every lay down with minimum ranges. So now we talk more about fiber selection basics. There are three possibilities in fiber selection. The first one, Insufficient fiber quality. We can call it as overspinning. So we all know what happens if you take 29.5 millimeter fiber length and produce 60 scum. So it is impossible to achieve 3,100 cc. And similarly, if you want to uh, use very long length and produce 20 scum, 10 scum, it is not that very easy. So uh, the overspinning um, is is a big issue. So if we, if we do not have clarity in fiber parameter selection, then we end up in producing poor quality parameters. Then we have low processing efficiency and it ultimately result in high manufacturing cost and quality cost. 
For example, mill should clearly select the suitable cotton parameters to spin any 60s weaving yarn with 3,100 CSP with 100% upland cotton. The second possibility is underspinning, which is using high quality cotton to produce low gradients. So I have personally seen that some mills, they, they process 50s foamed yarn also. In the same line, they produce 32 discarded yarn. When we enquired, what is the end use? It goes for towel end use. So it is a wastage of uh, money. So the, the, yarn, the cotton parameters have to be selected according to the end use. The third and the best option would be to select the suitable fiber quality parameters to produce the required yarn quality with minimum cost. Uh, we can call it as yarn engineering. So we don't give excess quality and we go, don't give the poor quality. What is required, that is very that is only possible if you have cotton parameter selection and the clarity on how yarn parameters are correlated with cotton parameters. So why fiber selection is so important? The following few slides will highlight the concept of fiber selection. So selection of cotton parameters depend on few factors. The major factor is count and the process. So cotton parameters suitable for 20s combed yarn will be totally different for process of producing 50s combed yarn, both for knitting. But uh, because for 20s, we can have very coarse microner, even up to five microner. The length can be even 27.8, 28 millimeter. And uh, fiber strength is not an issue if compact spinning is used for 20 scone. But it, this same fiber cannot be used for 50 scone. Then end use. So we, whether it is for knitting or for weaving. So we all know that for weaving, we need a longer length, stronger fiber, and lower microner as against uh, knitting coarser length, coarser microner, shorter length, and lower strength. And especially if we had compact, this can be compensated. Then this is very important spinning technology. So cotton parameters for 40s comb non-compact carded yarn and 40s compact carded yarn have to be totally different um, because um, it's a very difficult count to produce. And uh, if you do not have compact for 40s carded, sometimes I would even recommend it is better not to produce uh, carded 40s carded yarn in non-compact. So here spinning technology plays a major role. So some of the mills, they are, they are wise enough to spend money in compact technology to make sure that they get the advantage of cotton. So blending, so cotton parameter selection should be different for blending it with ELS cotton. And uh, it is not that, uh, is when, you, when you want to mix an upland, cut, upland cotton with ELS, the parameters of both ELS as well as of the upland can be selected to produce an excellent quality, which will be very similar to even 100% ELS cotton. Fiber selection helps to objectively mix cotton of different origins and growth to produce high quality yarns with minimum cost. So sometimes people tend to mix uh, different origins to minimize the mixing cost. But again, we should know the parameters like even we have to go to the next extent of whether it is manual pick, machine pick, sergeant, roller gin, and what are the other cotton parameters then it is then you make a better mixing if you know all the details so cotton parameter selection helps identify the outliers this is a very important topic so outliers are very important sometimes we think it is only one percent two percent and i have visited one mill in the recent past uh, they are so worried about white nubs uh, but uh, they use one or two bales of 3.3 micron thinking that only one bale doesn't affect it so, so outliers have to be decided according to the end use or the market requirement. So let us get into the details of where fiber selection is of vital importance. So cotton buying is the most critical activity in any spinning mill. Mills have different approaches, different mills have different approaches. So actually it has to be smart buying. So you should consider technological requirements, cost and the market trends also. So cotton parameters decide more than 70% of yarn quality. I can see it's not for all the cottons, but especially for the upland cotton uh, of the yarn price. So 70% of the quality is decided by the cotton and also the 70 plus 60 to 70% of yarn price is decided by the cotton. So different mills use different approaches to keep the cotton stock. For example, we know some many mills in India, they keep up to five to seven months of supply 
while others keep less than two months of inventory depending upon their cash flow on the, uh, the concepts. But invariably, mills keep uh, stock of around three to eight weeks with the US cotton because of you can have a different buying strategy with the US cotton. Uh, by selecting the suitable cotton parameters and spinning technology, carded yarn to replace foamed yarn is possible. There are incidences, there are mills who have done this. And sometimes the reverse is also true. Sometimes you buy a very poor quality yarn and you comb it and sell it as a premium carded yarn. So it's uh, spinning is all about how do we manipulate the cotton parameters. The advantages of optimum raw material are the optimum raw material represents the lowest possible yarn cost. Uh, yarn quality is on target and it can be consistent. So mills don't lose their customers. And this is, the, this is one of the major advantage of uh, correct raw material. So production is maximized. Right cotton parameters might help run carding with maximum production. I have seen, I was very surprised to see uh, different mills for the same count if you take 30 spoon or 24 spoon. I, I have seen mills working 30 kgs per hour and uh, people working 95 kgs per hour. It's not all mainly because of the carding machine. And even the same type of machine people work them. If you get into details, mainly it is because of the raw material being used. So manpower employed is minimized. Uh, so kgs per hour is increased, which in turn reduces HOK. So we all know what is HOK. HOK is number of operatives required to produce 100 kgs of yarn. So right cotton parameters used in the laydowns have a significant role in increasing the yield. And I have noticed many times there are incidences where uh, to increase the strength of the yarn, people increase the noise. But instead, if they select the right cotton parameters, this can be eliminated. So laydowns are prepared based on cotton parameters. Accurate fiber quality measurement is needed to use the parameters in the laydown. Average and CV values of all critical parameters are decided based on the end product. Average and CV values within and between laydowns should be under control. I have just added a, a laydown chart, which we have prepared only day, yesterday for a spinning mill in Bangladesh. So when you use uh, uh, the right method of preparing laydowns, and you can see how consistent, they, these are the laydowns, I think 15, 16 laydowns. So you can see the micronal value is 0.06. The B value is only 0.13 between laid on variation and very less. And you can see also the variation between CVs. So if you may, if you select the right parameters and you use it properly, it's very easy to achieve the required quality. So cotton parameter decides the process parameters for different applications. So this is what the ultimate technology in spinning is how do we select the parameters according to the cotton we use. That is the most important spinning technology in a spinning mill. Cotton parameters and yarn quality levels also decide quality control measures. Production planning has to go with cotton parameters available in stock. Hence, inventory, hence, inventory control, production planning, and cotton planning are interlinked to a great extent. For any new product, if you want to make, the first part, the first step to do is the fiber selection. Now let us concentrate on what is required for fiber selection and implement it successfully in a spinning mill. HOA data should be available for all the bits to be used in the laydown. HOA data for US cotton is available with our firm. This data can be obtained from merchants or agents. So laydowns are created uh, using a spreadsheet or an, uh, a software. And I have shown, there is a, just a few slides back, I have shown the laydowns that can be prepared. It is not a very difficult thing to do. And which parameters to be used in the fiber selection? This is the most important part which we are discussing. So most of the critical parameters obtained from HVA testing are used in fiber selection because many think that uh, bale management or cotton fiber selection, it means only we have to take care of micro owner and plus B value. But if you consider all the parameters from HVA, you, you, make a yarn, you make a yarn which is totally out of barre and with the yarn qualities, um, which are very consistent. So let me, a little bit more detail about certain parameters. Microner, let us consider about microner. Microner is decided by, uh, many don't uh, understand this. Microner is decided by both maturity and fineness value of a cotton. Microner does not directly represent maturity. And it does not directly represent the fineness value also. So it can be noticed from this graph that um, uh, the, for the same maturity value, 
the micron values are different and the vice versa so it all it is all de decided by uh, the finest value maturity is a deciding factor for dye picking so which is also influences the nipping tendency so fineness is more closely associated with the on properties so microner so hence both these parameters decide the microner microner is the most important parameter determining many process parameters like card production yarn count twist multiplier dyeability etc we can call it even we can even call it as a king of parameters as far as spinning technology is concerned so some of the examples from a very good trial so the data shown is from a control study a very carefully designed control study to highlight the uh, importance of cotton parameter with the on parameter there is a strong correlation between microner value and finisher sliver finest value of the finisher sliver which is 0.83 correlation between microner and nepsin finisher sliver is 0.93 if correlation between microner versus finest value is different this correlation might also vary so this correlation is not going to be always same because uh, it again depends upon the finest value for the same microner from the same study correlation between mic and 200% nepsin in the yarn is 0.72 which is very good so correlation between fiber nep per gram of finisher sliver and yarn nep is 0.87 and this is uh, again to highlight the importance of microner on dye pickup so it's everybody knows about it this is one of the challenges for many spinners but i have put this uh, picture just to highlight if you if you look at it carefully you can clearly see with a 5.1 microner in a carded count this is with a 20s carded count you don't see any nips in 5.1 microner whereas with 3.8 microner you see some white nips so it does not mean that all 3.8 microners are mature so again it is decided by the finest value of that cotton so staple length is an important cotton parameter this decides the cotton price and spinability to a great extent it is a compensation for spinning limit uh, which is uh, normally decided by the number of fibers in the cross section so longer the fiber better the spinability no doubt about it so it would be difficult to process long fibers with low microner values because the slenderness ratio is very high and whenever the slenderness ratio is very high the nipping tendency is big so i am going to highlight the most important technological contradiction in spinning the fiber which is good for carding is not good for spinning uh, so here you can see this trial also confirms that you can see the yellow marked ones they are the highest values the green marked ones are the lowest values and you can even, i we have even created a regression uh, tape analysis you can see the significant shape is so good so that it is very reliable this relationship is very reliable a lower microner high, higher microner lower length has always given the lower nips compared to a lower microner higher length mainly because of the high slender slenderness ratio so color grade is very important it is decided by um, two parameters the first digit uh, decides the uh, plus b uh, rd value the second digit is decided by the plus b value and uh, this also decides the cotton price the so cotton price is decided mainly by mostly by color grade also so color grade is decided by the growth condition in general uh, one study was done just to see whether there is a significant improvement but when the color of the same origin is widely different uh, compared to we see the color of 6 and color of 12 was compared there is a small difference in ipa value but there is no major impact in other parameters fiber strength we all know it is very important especially when it comes to weaving yarn but there are a lot of misconceptions fiber strength has little impact on yarn down so people think when i have a very good fiber strength my yarn breaks will come down there is no correlation similarly fiber strength does not appear to influence the twist required for maximum yarn strength so it's basically decided by fiber length and microner so uniformity index value one of the most important parameter uh, especially when you process carded yarn so it it, it has a big impact on ipi hardiness value and the twist being used a control trial uh, uh, research to highlight the importance of ui so there you can clearly see 83 uniformity index 82 uniformity index and 80.8 you can see the ipis on carded count there is a significant difference in uh, ipa so trash area represents the amount of trash in the cotton waste amount to be extracted or blow room waste especially blow room waste to be extracted is decided by this trash area 
and uh, the blow room design also number of beaters number of opening machines number of cleaning points have to be decided based on the trash area gene codes represents the gene location it might also indirectly represent the growth area so what are the limitations of the recommendation given this we have done it only for the 100% us upland cotton we have not considered els and count range uh, uh, is only up to 6 to 6s to 60s and air jet spinning is not yet considered and end users are mainly restricted to knitting and weaving for apparel and home furnishings it does not include industrial or technical textiles these recommendations are meant to produce yarn with 25% post studies is value or lower now we'll move on to the uh, live demo of fiber selection mastery course please bear with me i might take a few seconds to shift my to bring in the excel sheet in the meantime uh, i would request um, uh, mr pius uh, to continue yeah uh, thank you vijay and uh, i think uh, what you have very rightly you know presented uh, in your powerpoint today is uh, that the fiber selection is really the foundation stone of giving the good quality of the fiber and uh, the quality of the fiber is nothing but your own brand so so the most important factor that all of us really have to focus is on our brand and if you have to focus on the brand then then quality is something that we have to adhere to and the consistency is another point that you brought to and that has been one of the unique strength about us cotton is the consistency i mean what you get uh, is what you are actually buying behind uh, so that's the, the that's the entire concept behind the the us cotton that we have been speaking about yeah and once again i will want to reiterate here is that any of uh, the participants who will want to avail the services of the solutions team please reach out to us and uh, the first thing that we will do we will do a meet and greet session and then we can also do a technical survey if you really need to do it and then uh, once you buy the us cotton uh, our technical team can also come in and they can give their valuable suggestions which they have been giving to all the other mills and uh, yeah so this is what i so vijay all we set yeah i am set so okay, uh, can you see the screen can you see my screen so okay so okay, now what you see is the uh, interactive fiber selection uh, table um, uh, dashboard so we have we tried our best to divide uh, the cotton into different categories it's based on yarn count whether it is carded or combed whether it is for dark color or breech breeched and the spinning system whether it is compact ring or rotor the end use knitting or weaving so i just want to demonstrate uh, let us take one count 28 to 32s count uh, carded knitting ring bleached and dark so let us take knitting dark carded and 28 to 32s so it gives us uh, what color grade i should use what is the leaf grade recommended average the top column this one is the average value the bottom one is the minimum maximum value of the bales in the laid out so staple length uh, 36 uh, staple which is uh, around 28.6 mm length and this is for the compact system knitting yarn dark color carded end use and the count range 28 to 30s and uh, the micron range of the laid down can be 4.4 to 4.7 and below if you see the minimum the between bale variation can be 4 up to 5 one microner and sometimes you can even go up to 1.2 so we are just put as a guideline we can be slightly modified it needs it you can slightly extend one step higher down one step below um, but this is the we are given that if you use these parameters it will certainly work in your mill and uh, but it can be little bit uh, adjusted it can be little bit modified it's not that it is like a formula only this you have to use and um, uh, strength of the fiber required is 29 the minimum 27 to 31 rd value 74 to 76 and you can take even 70 to 80 to 12 numbers of rd value provided if you have a proper bale management system and uh, if you use it for the bleached you see immediately the microner shifts and the, there is no major change in other parameters the microner you can go as low as 3.8 to 4.4 average value 3.8 also can be used and the minimum microner value is 3.6 to 4.8 because diability is not a big issue and then we'll take one more example 28 to 32 carded weaving end use uh, co comparison with 36 to 42 carded and carded weaving compact 
So you can see this is 28 to 32 for carded yarn, weaving application, compact spinning. 36 staple is enough, micron error 4.4, 4.7, 30 strength compared to knitting, you can see the fiber strength is slightly increased. Um, or if you reduce the fiber strength, then the staple length has to be slightly increased. The RD is on the higher side because we all know low RD normally has, it's not a very suitable cotton for uh, weaving yarn. And uh, color is uh, anything, average anything between 8.5 to 9.5. So color also 7 to 10.5. Here also you see plus B will be 4.5 up to 5 can be utilized provided if you have a proper bail management system. The moment we change to 36 to 42, the count changes, then you can see the staple length requirement changes. The staple length required is 38. For the 28 to 32, it was 36. Then microner range, we try to push the microner range higher if you want to produce a higher, uh, better yarn quality. And the range also is specified. Strength is also on the higher side compared to 28, 32 because it is for weaving and use. Then RD value also selected on the higher side. Um, then plus B does not matter much. We can see one more combination, 28 to 32 carded weaving to compare rotor, compact and ring spinning technologies. So weaving, we can see compact is 36 staple and ring, it is 37 staple and rotor. You, you don't need long length for rotor spinning, 35 staple. So, which is 27.5 millimeter with ring, it is around 29 millimeter and compact, uh, it is around 28.5 millimeter. So, similarly, the fiber strength, everything changes. So, this is an attempt the CC has made to standardize the parameters according to the count, the process, carded or comb, uh, spinning system, whether compact ring or rotor, end use, knitting or weaving, and also the color, whether it's for dark color or for bleach color, mainly because very frequently we get a complaint. Oh, US cotton is not suitable to color to for the dark colors. So what Alan has presented, it was absolutely there was no problem if the correct cotton parameters were selected. And there is plenty of bills available with the, those parameters suitable to produce dark colors with US cotton. And thank you very much for the time. Thank you, Vijay, for that lovely presentation. And uh, I've been receiving a lot of comments about your presentation. Everyone is looking forward to receive your presentation. So just to tell you, our participants that we shall be sharing all the presentations that are being made today during this webinar. And uh, now is the time that you know we have to move to our next presentation. And our next speaker is Mr. Levan Ras. And uh, he's going to speak on the topic, the barriers to profitability in spinning mills. So Levin Ras holds a master's degree in textile engineering from the University of Ghent in Belgium. He has 32 years of experience in the textile industry. His core competency are mainly in dyeing and finishing area. Although he has in-depth practical knowledge in spinning, weaving, knitting, garment manufacturing, and marketing. He has most recently worked with Werner International as a vice president and technical director. Apart from technical and management experience at a senior level, he has operated as a consultant for more than 20 years, including leading the Werner team responsible for the restructuring of public textile sector in Egypt and many startups and restructuring projects in Middle East, Africa, and Asia. Over to you, Levin. Thank you, Piyush. Uh, my name is Levin Veras. I'm speaking to you from Portugal, although I'm a Belgian citizen. And my today's presentation will be about the barriers of profitability in spinning mills. First of all, as, as Vijay already told you, this is our, our slogan at CCI, uh, which is, it's not about making yarn, it's about making money. Because the ultimate goal of any company, of any spinning mill is making money. The goal is not to produce the best quality. It's not only to produce the cost control. It's at the end, it's about making money. So if you look at CCI during the last years, uh, we have recruited experts from all over the globe. Uh, these experts have been, have more altogether over 200 years of experience in running textiles mills, companies consulting in over 55 countries. And in the last years, this team has got the opportunity in visiting over 100 companies from Thailand, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, 
Indonesia, Vietnam, and China. And we have observed all the operations in those mills, and we have tried to assist them with uh, achieving a better performance, and as a result, uh, to, to concentrate on the barriers of maximizing profitability during, during these visits. Because even some mills in where we see that the management thinks that they have already, they might have squeezed everything out of the cotton and out of their productivity. We have seen that even in those very high level uh, companies that there is still room for, uh, for improvement. So as I as explained before, and also in the, in the presentation from Puch, uh, from 2018 on, uh, CCI started a number of research projects, which were done by third parties, third parties, consultant companies. And these uh, researches and these studies that we have done, they have clearly demonstrated the superior mill performance of US cotton fiber in both knitted and woven fab fabrics. Uh, when you compare them with other cottons on the market, such as Indian cotton, Brazilian cotton, West African cotton, and Pakistani cotton. And we have seen that the US fiber does not only produce uh, a higher machine and labor productivity, but it also produces less waste, which is finally important also for the cost and the profitability of a textile mill. In my presentation, I will uh, focus on the main six common issues which we see that uh, in each, in every mill that we have visited. And this is, this is the raw material selection, waste control, the machine and labor productivity, the quality and process control, industrial engineering, and finally cost control. Through our independent research and studies that we have done and that were sponsored by CCI, we, has repeat, we have repeatedly seen that price should not be the only cr criteria for the selection of raw material. And you have seen that also in the presentation that was done by, by VJ. We constantly talk to the customers about the importance of what we call the golden triangle. What we mean by the golden triangle is that the purchasing of cotton it needs to be not only decided by the mill director or the owner, it has to involve all the people within the processing and even the selling of the cotton. This means the mill manager has also to be involved because he actually he will have to spin uh, the raw material. And then at the end of the day, also this cotton has to be, has to, needs to have sufficient quality and needs to be able to be, to be sold. So this is what we call the golden triangle. And in the purchasing decision of the cotton, we are convinced that these three sectors, main sectors of a spinning company, they have to be, have to be involved. So in our experience, mills that put their cotton purchases out to a myriad of merchants every time when they buy cotton, they might eventually being buying the cheapest cotton, but at the end of the day, when they spin it and when they sell it, they might pay a higher price at the end. The rule should be to become important to few. We are convinced at CCI that it is important, that loyalty is important, that loyalty breeds loyalty, and that the knowledge of the raw material is power also. And we at CCI, at US Cotton, we we understand very much that all the data that are provided by USDA, by US Cotton, uh, all these data that are provided for every bale, they will help you to choose the, the, the correct fiber parameters and to, at the end of the day, have a better productivity and a better profitability of your, of your mill. Then coming to waste control, knowing that 70% of the total costs of a yarn are represented by the raw material. It is obvious that controlling the raw material has the greatest impact on the profitability of a, of a mill. 
Our independent research has shown that US cotton runs better and creates less waste compared with, with other cottons. So effective waste control is macro and not a micro activity. You must control at every stage of the process your waste. And you would be surprised when we visit these, these companies, VJ and Alan and the other consultants, they visit a lot of mills. There are a lot of mills that do not really know where, what amount of waste they have in each, in each process. And if you don't know in which process you are losing the fiber, how can you take any corrective action and at the end of the, of the day also increase, increase your productivity? and your um, profitability of your, of your mill. An effective and accurate waste control in, is the cornerstone of any profitable cotton spinning operation. And as I've pointed out, out earlier, it is well known in the industry that processing US cotton leads to the best yield percentages. Then another aspect, aspect is the machine and labor productivity. Where the cost of labor has historically been inexpensive in countries like Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan, we have seen the tendency to just to ignore the importance of labor productivity. In countries where labor is cheap, this can lead to technical negligence. Sometimes instead of addressing technical challenges and the issues related to that, there is a temptation of just throwing more labor into these problems. And this can be a very expensive mistake, both in terms of yarn quality and, both, and also in terms of cost of the final, final cotton. Looking at quality also, there is no doubt that if you want to survive in this very competitive business of spinning, quality is a given for the survival. In a very competitive world of cotton spinning, the control of the key aspects in every step of the process, meaning from blow room to the winding, is the foundation for a world-class uh, operation and for world-class quality and creating the operating, condition, operating conditions also to improve and to maximize the productivity. During our visits, as I explained, over the 100 mills that we have been visiting during the last three years, we, we visited too many mills in which uh, people do not routinely measure, for instance, the net reduction efficiency of their individual cards. They don't measure the frequency and the cause of stops per thousand spindle hours in the ring frame. And they expect that only by doing uh, laboratory testing of the yarn, this will be sufficient to produce high quality yarn. We at CCI, we are convinced that the mills that do not monitor the individual spin spindle splicer strength in the widening, uh, mills that complain to us about the difference in the data they receive from the USDA and do their own testing results, when you don't have the correct ambient conditions in your laboratory, then you might not be exactly knowing what you are doing. So quality and the process control in every stage, even in the laboratory, this is, this we, we think this is extremely, extremely important to finally also have a good productivity and a good profitability in your, in your mill. Since the introduction of uh, the CCI technical service team in 2018, as I told you, we have visited over 100 spinning mills that are using US cotton. And we have tried to help them to maximize their performance and to enhance their profitability. It is strange, and it was very strange to us that almost in none of these mills, we have seen even basic industrial uh, engineering techniques that are very used in, in areas like Europe and in, and in North America where labor costs are extremely high. In countries such as India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, in most of the mills, we have not seen this basic industrial engineering. And if you look at it, for instance, in a ring, in a ring frame, as an example, 
if an operator is incorrectly is uh, incorrectly loaded loading and is looking after too many spindles in relation to the machine stops per thousand spindle hours the impacts on the machine efficiency the number of idle spindles and the increased pneumophil waste will have major negative impacts and on the cost and also directly related to the profitability in almost every mill that we have visited there can be major savings in the automatic winding department uh, by the application of simple techniques industrial engineering which is also part of one of one of our mill mastery courses uh, are widely used to save labor costs and in our particular case it was not about only saving labor it is mainly about seeing how industrial engineering can eventually redistribute your labor where it is needed the most and at the end of the day increasing the profitability of your uh, of your spinning mill if we look then at cost control and prior to the crisis we have seen pri prior to uh, the pandemic of covid we have seen that too many spinning mills especially in this part of the of the world they have been struggling financially because there is too much capacity overall in the in this in this industry that imbalance between supply and demand will only exacerbate in the new normal post pandemic in which we all have to operate and we hope that it will be very soon you would be surprised then that if we tell you that how many mills we have visited who do not really have any idea of the actual costs of the yarn that they are producing they are just somewhere guessing the cost that they have for uh, the, the yarn that they are producing and they calculate based on a guess they calculate the selling price of the yarn we are convinced that mills that do not have the ability to analyze their product folio and it means doing this on a daily basis uh, the type of yarns that you are producing on each of the machines that they will have difficulties to control their uh, their costs and to eliminate eventually uh, excessive costs from their manufacturing program and going a little bit more in detail in what we call our profitability model and this is part also for, for a specific mill mastery course which we would be very glad to offer to your uh, to your mills and i will try to explain briefly the the model how it works the model i'm going to talk about the profitability model is considers and incorporates all factors that may have an influence on the profitability as shown in the circle on this on this slide all those factors sales cost control machine and labor productivity uh, they are calculated in the contribution mar margin that each article in your mill running on each individual machine has to achieve. Going a little bit more in detail, what you see here on the left side is of this slide is an example of the structure of an ordinary um, profit and loss statement. This is what we call a mini PL. The general principle of the model is to compare the individual target contribution margin per machine of any given mill compared to the actual contribution margin per machine. For the calculation of the target contribution margin, we consider all the cost factors that are highlighted in, in yellow, which are the operational costs, the cost for sales, the GNA, the R&D, the depreciation, and the interest. This is what we calculate for the target contribution margin. Then we have the actual contribution margin in US dollars per spindle. This is based on the sales price, the raw material cost, and the output per machine. And we compare that with the target contribution margin in US dollar per spindle per day. And this is based on an annual mill budget. We look at the mill budget for labor costs, uh, depreciation, and so on. And we calculate that uh, based on the working days per year, 
and the spindles and rotors that are installed in every, in every unit. Let's now have a closer look at the calculation of the target contribution margin. In this very simple formula, and as I told you, what we, what we use is a very simple and understandable profit and loss statement. But at the end of the day, it will help you as an operational uh, tool. It will help you to see on a daily basis which yarns and which machines are running profitably. profitably. So it's a very simple formula, formula on which the target contribution margin is based upon an annual budget for the mill. It means the planned operational costs, adding the depreciation, the overheads and the interests, and then divide these yearly costs by the number of working days per year and the number of machines that are installed per unit. This will give you the costs that each machine uh, needs to earn every day to get the break even. So what we show you here is 55, 56 cents of US dollars per spindles per day. This is the cost that you need to break even with this machine. This is what you have to earn on each spindle of each machine to break even every, every day, even if the machine is not, is not running. Then going to the actual contribution margin, in the second formula, it works like this. We are starting from the other side. It means we consider, first of all, the sale price and the raw material cost, which we deduct from the sale price. We take then also off there the commission and the transport cost, and we, cal we, we multiply this by the production in kilos per day of each machine. And we divide this by the number of spindles, and it gives you the actual uh, contribution margin of each spindle. It means in this one we have here, uh, 57 cents per spindle per day. This means compared with the former slides where we had 56, you are more or less breaking even. This means what can we do here to increase the profitability of, of this specific yarn? If we are able, imagine here we have exactly the same formula, formula where you have this uh, 56 cents where we were more or less breaking even. If you are then eventually using a more expensive cotton. In the case, for instance, and we here, we know that US cotton is more expensive compared with Indian cotton. If by using a better cotton and by doing the right fiber parameter selection, you might, you will probably be able by running your machines better and by having a higher output, a better performance of your machines per day. And only by this, despite of the higher raw material costs, you will at the end of the day, you will have a higher um, profitability and actual contribution margin of your, of your yarns. And this slide shows the concept of a daily report that is mentioned earlier. This is done for each machine and our profitability model generates generates on a daily basis uh, a complete report. So each pinning frame works every day to bring back the contribution margin that you need for meeting your budget tar targets. In this example, the target is 672 US dollars per machine. Some of the machines are under this target and some of the machines are above. And by looking at this daily profitability statements that you have for each machine, you can easily see which machines you can analyze your product follow, follow, folio and analyze um, what, tar what products are being profitable in your, in your mill. So analyzing your product portfolio from a different perspective, Imagine that your target contribution margin would be this 50, 56 cents that we have calculated before per spindle per day. So this is what you have to earn on each, uh, on each machine, on each spindle to be profitable per day. You can see on the table displayed on the slide that there are 
articles which are making good money. And there are some articles which are not making money. And this is exactly why this uh, uh, chart is used. You can very easily on a daily basis see which product products are being profitable and which are not being profitable. And you can use this model to discuss internally with the owner or the mill manager and then the, um, the technical people what eventually can be done to increase your profitability on each on each of the yarns. So as I mentioned before, there would be a daily report then that shows you how your unit has performed yesterday. For instance, did I earn the required 28,000 28, US dollars that you had to set as a target? This means here, if you have all these machines, these 42 machines, and you have your target contribution that would be calculated for each of the machines in, er in, in order to break even, this mill needs to earn 28,000 US dollar per day. In this case, you have an actual contribution margin of 30,380 US dollar. This means that your mill has uh, made profit of 2,380 US dollar that day. But you can look then more in detail in this, uh, in this chart. And you can see that, for instance, machine number five, who was running uh, a common card at uh, NE20, that this one was not, was not uh, being profitable. So you can analyze what happened in this, in this machine. Then the profitability model at the end of the day, it's to maximize the profitability of each unit. And you have to work on both ends as illustrated here in this slide. On the one hand, the mills need to work on reducing the target contribution margin, which is simply by reducing the cost factors shown in here, which is uh, electricity, labor costs, spare parts, and so on. But certainly all mills are consistently working on cost savings. But again, our CCI team, we can be of assistance to your mill management to help also uh, with optimizing and streamlining your costs. On the right hand side, we list then the factors that are important for increasing the actual contribution margin. And in the next slide, I will show you the real driving factors for increasing the actual contribution margin of your mill. So in our model, the last feature that the model is uh, bearing is a different approach on calculating rock bottom sales prices. So it will help you to see what is the rock bottom sale price you have to sell the yarn at to be profitable for specific yarns. Again, here, the driving factor will be the output. The base for this calculation is the target contribution margin divided by the production rate in gram per spindle per day. And this number represents the standard operational cost of each article. And it will be used to determine the sale price. So at the end, it comes all down to output. Output, as I told you before, is the key. You have, have heard that so many times that uh, it also true for a single spinning frame, but it is also true for an entire unit. The total mill output is linked to the average count. In mills that we have been running in the past, we were always striving to run the average count as close as as close to the maximum what I could get out of the cording, of the carding. We see it somewhere as a bad tap. The carding is your main uh, area in your spinning unit. You need to be able to produce carding and to be able to to get it through your uh, to your mill. So output is the key, and the key factor in your in your mill is the carding carding section. And finally, if we open the scissors that the arrows here show on this uh, on this slide. It shows how it works to maximize, maximize your profit. Simply by increasing the actual contribution margin and reducing the target contribution margin, you will maximize your, uh, your profit. And then going to 
a little example. We have here a daily chart of some different products. And we see here that, for instance, on the above uh, table on product D, this product is not making any profit. Is it, is it actually making a loss of 7.5%? If you look at the other one, you can analyze these data and you can see that eventually by increasing your RPM, your spindle speed, or by decreasing uh, your twist factor, you might get into, into green figures already. For, some, for another one, for product E, for instance, if you also are able to increase your RPMs, you will be able to increase your profitability of this yarn by from 24.7% to 40.4%. And this is exactly, exactly where CCI comes in and where we can help you out with the superior performance of US cotton. We are convinced by choosing the right parameters by helping you with the settings from uh, blow room until winding that we can help you to in in improve your productivity and actually improve also your, um, your profitability of your, uh, of your spinning mill. And now I'm coming to the end of my presentation. And I will just draw a very quick, quick conclusion. The CCI profitability model, which we are uh, willing to offer you as, um, as a mill mastery course in, in, your, in your mill and to do this uh, in person. We believe that only the best mills will survive in the post pandemic world. And that turning, a, turning an average mill into a good mill is relatively easy. But we know that a lot of your mills are already very good mills and that turning a good mill into a great mill needs very hard work. It needs very hard work from your side. And we also at CCI, we, at CCI, we are willing to help you with, with this. Again, our CCI team is dedicated helping the customers of US Upland Cotton and that we believe is the best cotton in, in the world. And we are uh, willing to help you to make the transition from a good mill to uh, a great mill. I thank you very much for your attention and I thank you also for your business. And now we are ready, I hand it over again to Piyush and we are ready, ready for your answers and questions. Thank you. Thank you, Levin, for that wonderful presentation. And indeed, Indian mills are, uh, you know, definitely wants to make the transition from the good mills to the great mills. And that is where the hard work of our solutions team is going to pay. And uh, just to update you, you know, the Indian mills are actually uh, investing a lot in, this, in, in, uh, in the new textile machinery. And uh, probably they're going to add another three to five million spindles in the next couple of years. So I think uh, the concept to become from good mill to the great mill is definitely needed, especially in the post pandemic world that you rightly said. Uh, now we will come uh, to the uh, question and answer session. And uh, so uh, all our speakers are right over there. So one thing I will also want to point out today is uh, that, you know, we also want to hear about the uh, feedback that about the today's presentations that you have heard. So there is a QR code here. Uh, while we are doing the question and answer session, uh, may I please request all our attendees today, if they can click on this QR code and then they can respond uh, how they felt about today's presentation and if they have any feedback for us, how to improve or any special topics that they want us to take for the next sessions, uh, we can do that. The other thing is that we have received a lot of requests that you want to uh, receive the presentations. So we will request you to please uh, send your feedback through this QR code. And once we receive the uh, your feedback, we, we are going to send you the uh, PDF version of all the presentations that you have seen today. Uh, now, gentlemen, we are actually, you know, uh, really pressed on time, but I'm going to take a couple of questions, which I think are really important, uh, depending upon the uh, session that we have taken today. The first question is right from the first presentation. And the, the question is, is all the U.S. cotton sorgent or uh, how much percentage of the U.S. cotton is sorgent? I mean, that is the question. Anyone uh, will want to take that? Alan, uh, maybe you want to take that? Uh, maybe this is from the first presentation. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for the for the question. I believe that all 100% uh, 
uh, cotton in uh, gin in the U.S. is sojin cotton. Um, um, Vijay, you Supima, have? Yeah, I think yeah, except, Supima is an origin. Except Supima and some Supima. staple cotton, SJV. That's roller gin. SJV, Akala and Ultima, certain percentage are roller gin. And most of the upland cottons are sojin. 100% so, upland cotton is sojin, except the yeah. SJV. And Supima is around 2%, so we can say that 98% of U.S. cotton is solid. If I'm not wrong, Vijay, I think, can we make that? That yeah. 97 to 98% of U.S. cotton is solid. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the other question is, again, I think from the first presentation, uh, when we were comparing the solid and the roller gin cotton, they, uh, the question that has come up was, what about the yarn realization and strength? Also, our process parameters may be different based on the machinery manufacturing. This is uh, a question that has come up. So, the, and what was the fiber lens those were, uh, which was chosen when we selected those uh, fiber uh, qualities to make that comparison? Well, it was a, it was a very, uh, it was a very big, very big study. <laughs> and in the report, which I, as I mentioned, 108 pages full of tables and, and characteristics and everything. So we can, uh, we can send to this, uh, to, to the gentleman, to the person who has the question, uh, the tables about the, the fiber characteristics for the uh, four types of cottons. But uh, I, I saw the table and the four uh, types of cotton were had uh, the similar fiber characteristics. And uh, the study was made in the same spinning plant uh, on the same equipment with the same settings. Thank you, Ellen. I think that uh, is a very good response uh, to that question. And uh, I think the next question is probably towards the fiber selection. Maybe this goes to you, Vijay. I mean, there are two questions over here that, you know, uh, we will definitely want your response on is, you know, what is the you know, finest yarn count that we can spin with the US supplement cotton? Because I think there is a perception with Indian spinners that, you know, they can't go beyond 40 to the yarn count when they're talking of upland cotton. But I think in your presentations, I think there are there is a potential that you know that U.S. cotton definitely, or you have an experience that U.S. cotton upland cotton, the I mean spinners are able to spin much more than for this yarn count. If you can share your experience with you on this, please. Yeah, thank you, Pius, and it is a very good question. Uh, so it's a general uh, feeling that uh, U.S. upland cotton is not suitable for more than 50s count. Uh, this is a generally everybody thinks that. Even one of the mill owner they asked me. Uh, can you please uh, tell me whether U.S. cotton is suitable for producing 60s count, except the SJVs? But uh, it was very, it's a coincidence. Today I was going through the, uh, the cotton incorporated uh, U.S. crop data. You'll be surprised. I listed, uh, filtered the bales. We have 2.89 million bales that are suitable to produce 60s and 70s. Wow, that's amazing. That's, it, that's great. Yeah, that when I calculate, it is coming approximately 40 million spinders in the world can work whole year to produce 60s and 70s. Wow, that's a great calculation. So we have a, the average length is uh, 31.5, the microner average is 4.2. Uh, so actually, we are preparing a, a presentation for 60s and 70s, which is going to come in April. So I was just Googling it and checking it, working on this presentation. So it's the right question. We have plenty of cotton available to produce 60s and 70s. And now I'm going to the opposite end of it. I mean, you know, uh, Indian mills aren't using US cotton for the open end yarns. Uh, so what is, I mean, what is in, in your opinion is hindering them to not use US cotton for the, for the open end yarns or, or what is your opinion of that? No, uh, I don't know. It's again, depending upon the, but if you see the other countries, they use only US cotton. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, so this is uh, your experience. We wanted to know your experience. How, how was so your experience? When I was working in Indonesia, we used 100% US cotton. There is a very good quantity of that. Also, I filtered today. I think around, um, uh, I, I will check and confirm. There are a few hundred thousand bales, which are suitable only for open end. And you produce fantastic open end yarn. So from open end, what we need is more number of fibers in the cross section and short length and good strength. So that is available and it depends on the end use. Suppose you are supplying to a, a good brand and retailer for Levi's and they ask for a, a US trust protocol um, um, sustainability program, certainly you'll be forced to use 100% US cotton to meet this requirement. Thank you, Vijay. 
And the next question is with US cotton, how much maximum speed you can go in carding for best optimum quality uh, Ooster latest standard? Yeah, it depends on the parameters. If you select the right parameters, as I mentioned, that is combed, we have tried up to 120 kgs per hour and produced uh, IPAs less than 20 IPA. So again, depends on the cotton parameter you select. Uh, so, but uh, in US cotton, you can buy the parameter what you want, you can select the parameters. So, it again depends on the slenderness ratio, like what should be the length and what should be the micron. That decides the cord production. And uh, it, it might range from uh, 60. And we have done recently a few consultants, uh, consultancy programs in uh, Pakistan mills. Invariably, all of them run more than 80 kgs. Invariably, with US cotton per hour. Thank you, Vijay. And uh, the next question is on the mill mastery course. Uh, I mean, uh, because we have a, a couple of uh, academicians also joining today. They have asked that uh, they would like to know about the mill mastery course. Uh, will it be useful for students? If yes, how can uh, students get there to attend this mill mastery course? And is it free or a paid course? Uh, to respond to this, uh, whatever knowledge I have, this is mainly for the mills especially somebody who has joined the cotton US licensing program and the US cotton test protocol program. So they are the ones, you know, who can choose uh, to go ahead with the mill mastery course. Maybe our speakers, if you have other opinion or you have any other thoughts to address to this question about the mill mastery course. I mean, if some students wants to attend it uh, or some academicians wants to enter into this, how do, you know, they want to go about it? Just, uh, you know, your thoughts about it. Even. So I think it's mainly for the mills, right? That's what we, uh, you know, that's the, that's the call as it's today. It would be difficult, I think. We have limited yes. consultants. Yes. Uh, it would be, uh, as of now, it would be difficult. Maybe in future, might, it might be. Yeah. Thank you, Vijay. I think that is uh, also the understanding uh, I had with me. This is mainly a program that is uh, directed to the mills. And it's as most of these mill mastery courses are done in person. Uh, they are done in, in the mills and on request of the of the mills. Yes. Thank you, Levin. And uh, I think before we wind up, we can take another one or two questions. So I think this is the second last one, and then we can have another questions because we are really really running out of time. So this is a question from uh, you know one of the uh, Cotton USA licensee mill and also a trust protocol member. Uh, they said they have used US cotton uh, US uh, mod especially. And uh, one of the experience that they had is that they have noted wax coating in all the material passage area. Uh, so it was very difficult for them to clean. Uh, it embedded a lot of fibers near rotating parts, machine surfaces. So what is the solution to prevent uh, this kind of uh, situation? Especially the wax related issue. Um, but it is very unheard of. Maybe I don't know what is the specification they have bought or if it is of the very high, um, very high plus B values. There is slightly possibility is there, uh, but wax coatings are always good. But if it is too much excess, it is may, may not be a wax coating. But we do not also know about the flow room process. They have to remove the micro dust in the flow room efficiently, um, or it is very, very, very rare. Normally, when you have the sticking tendency, this is the starting point. You might get up this wax coating on the top rollers, especially in the rubber cuts. Um, we have not heard about it in the in the recent past because there is no stickiness in US cotton now, especially other than the Supima. So anyway, it would be interesting if they have such issues, they invite, they call, contact us and we will do some service for them. Yes, I will also want to say to Mr. Rajivan uh, from Petspin because that's a question from him because Mr. Rajivan, you are a cotton US LSNC and you are also a trust protocol member. So you have the privilege to call us to your mill and, uh, you know, as Vijay has said, uh, you can get in touch with us and we'll be glad to help you out with any kind of those issues. So because we had, you know, such issue in a uh, little bit issue of, of that kind with the other mill. And I think we have helped them uh, in, in a very good fashion. So I think with this, uh, uh, I think we can come down to our last question. And uh, this is on the profitability module. So, uh, uh, Liban, you know, we were talking of the reference target contribution margin, you know, which was like, so is there any benchmark that we have, you know, for each country that it should be like 0.56 cents per spindle per day, or is there any, you know, such kind of benchmark 
that we as a cotton USA team would have to share or are we working on this? So, so this is something if you can throw your ideas on that specifically on the reference target contribution margin per spindle per day that you know is one of the benchmark that we talked about. Yes, this is actually a, a good question. And this comes with something that we are working on and that we'll be presenting probably in the, in the second quarter of this year. We are working on a benchmarking project which will not directly include the, the, the target contribution margin, but with, which will include uh, profitability and uh, productivity of, uh, of the mills. So yes, we are, we are working on that. And this is a tool that we will be, be launching as a sixth component, component of our USA solutions uh, program in, in the, the second quarter of this, of this year, yes. Thank you, Levin. And I'm afraid, you know, we are really running short of time and there are a few more questions which are left out, but I will encourage our participants just to write to me or even to Textile Magazine and we can take the questions right from there. And before we really close the session today, once again, uh, I would request all our participants to please uh, click on this uh, 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 scan, just scan the QR code and send your responses. And as soon as we receive your responses, we're going to send you the PDF version of the presentation. And uh, now I'm very uh, thankful to all our presenters, all our speakers, Levin, uh, Mr. Vijay, Alan, you know, for taking up their time. Especially, I think, Alan, you must be feeling sleepy now. You know, you really wake up in the middle of the night. So you can uh, take rest now. <laughs> go go back to bed again. And uh, thank you very much once again. And now I'm uh, uh, once again very thankful uh, to, our, uh, to the Textile Magazine who have helped us to get through these presentations uh, today and, uh, uh, you know, to make it a real good success. Thank you very much uh, to all, all of the speakers and, and a special thanks to our participants because without you, we won't be, you know, having this fantastic presentation today. Thank you very much once again. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Piyush. Uh, what a wonderful thought provoking webinar that was by the CCI. I really like to thank uh, all the speakers for today's audience. Uh, I would like to thank Mr. Alan Matthew, Mr. Tavasi Vijay Kumar, Mr. Livain Vesres, and a very special thanks to Piyush and his team uh, who have been working with us for the last couple of weeks for this uh, webinar, and uh, it sure is a really big success with the kind of questions that we've had, with the kind of attendees and the registration. It was a very good webinar. Thank you. Thank you all for this. Hope to see you all again uh, in the next webinar. So until then, stay safe, uh, stay tuned. This is Ganesh Kalidasan signing off. Take care, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye.